Welcome back to Passionate About RC. Um, in, in this video, I want to talk about the Traxxas ID batteries and the ID chargers. I've been asked by a few customers if we could make this video recently, so I thought I'd bring it forward. It was always something I wanted to do, um, so I'm going to do it now. Um, what we'll start with is just running through the four chargers that we keep in store, which we think of. There, there's a charger for everybody. Um, they range in price, so depending on on your budget and what you need to charge etc may um, depend on what charger you'll choose but we'll start here with the easy peak plus which is this charger here so this is the cheapest one in the range and that will charge a 9 mh and a lipo um, battery type so this will run you up to a 3s battery so you can use all your 9 mhs and anything up to a 3s battery in this one so that's the Easy Peak Plus with a single port. Then you've got the Easy Peak Dual. Um, so it's effectively the same, runs up to eight amps, um, but you can plug two batteries in at the same time here. So that's a really good um, charger if you're running something like a um, uh, like an e Revo or a Desert Racer or anything that you need to power two batteries so you could get them both charged together. Um, so they're really good. A little bit more expensive, but um, they're really good. We have some good in-store deals on these um, chargers because we have a lot of those laying around. Um, the ones we sort of recommend are actually these ones, the Easy Peak Live Chargers. So this is the single port live charger, and this will run all the 9Hs, all the 2S, all the 3S, uh, and also the 4S batteries. So this will power the 4S batteries for things like the X Max and the Max that run on a 4S battery. So that's a really good one. That's up to 12 amp power. And the final one is the big, the big dual um, Easy Peak Live. So this is the one that we generally sell with the X Max or anything that runs on two 4S batteries, which is at the moment just the X Max. Um, but that's a brilliant charger. Being able to charge both 4S batteries at the same time is really, really good. So um, that's one I have on my desk as well, along with the live um, single port charger. So let me pop them away. So what we'll start with is the um, 9mh battery and um, so all the Traxxas batteries come with the ID connector so this is the 3000 milliamp hour 9mh battery that comes in most um, brushed cars where you get the battery and a cigarette lighter socket charger so that's a common battery that you're going to see that comes with most cars and we have the 7600 2s lipo battery so that's a two cell Again, you've got your ID charger there. Uh, sorry, your ID connector there. And we've also got the 3000. Uh, sorry, the, that's the 5000, but 3S. So again, your Traxxas ID connector. And then we have the 4S 6700 milliamp um, battery that goes in the Max, the X Max, and, and various other vehicles. So what we're going to do is run through how simple it is to charge a battery using the Traxxas um, chargers. So this is the Easy Peak Live with a single port. And the reason I recommend this one is because you can check your voltages on the fly while you're charging the battery. So here we have the app up on my mobile screen. So here it's obviously saying it wants to connect a battery um, at the minute, so I'm hoping this is the one that's connected to this currently. Let me just double check. I think it's this one here. So there we go. So basically all you're gonna do, with um, get your charger powered up so everything's ready and waiting, open up your app so your app's up on screen. And then all, you, all you're gonna do is connect the battery into the charger here. And that's gonna read the battery for you and pick the type of battery that you've just plugged in, which in this case is the 9mH. On the screen, you're also gonna see the voltage of this battery after we've plugged it in. And that's obviously saying it's ready to charge there. I don't know if you can see that on the screen. 
So uh, here you've got your battery info uh, and information like the part number of the battery, etc. What what the battery is, current charge, etc. Capacity, cell count. Um, you can click into that so you can get a bigger reading there if you want to. But um, so that's the app, which is really nice because you can you can see what's going on here. So what we'll do is we'll go over to the charger and it's already picked the kind of charge it wants to do so literally all you need to do here is just press and hold the start stop button that beeps uh, the green light starts flashing to indicate that it's charging and that's basically it so all you're going to do now is wait for that charge to to finish so over here at the app let's put key back over to here hope you can see that okay on the screen um, You've got here then that obviously your charge has started. You've got a nice little graphic here on the app that's showing you that's happening. You've got a progress bar here. So my estimation time is 52 minutes at the moment. And it's telling me it's it's 1% um, into that charge process. So there's a little way to go on this battery. So with a 9 mh it's really straightforward. Um, you've, you've got here the current that it's putting out at the moment and the voltage of the battery. So it, it tells you everything here, it's brilliant. So you know where you're at at all times. And that's why I always always push this charger in general. Um, they are a bit more expensive, but they will really, really look after your battery and, and you can do these checks um, to be able to do that. If you did want to go for one of the cheaper um, chargers that don't have the live um, ID part here, where you're seeing this on screen, there is a Traxxas voltage um, meter reader. So you can purchase one of these with your charger, um, but then you're almost paying the same money as if you just bought this charger in the first place. So depending on if you want to buy this at a separate point later on down the line, that's probably a good idea. Um, but if you're gonna buy this and the charger, you might as well just get this this charger to start with. But this, this is a good tool. You, um, you can go up to a 4S LiPo on this one. So it's um, it is really good. That that would suggest to get if you've got one of the other chargers that don't give you these live readings. So all you're going to do here with this battery is let this charge. The red lights will eventually go um, normally go up to the top here, and um, and the green light will eventually go solid, solid green, and the charger will start to beep um, to let you know that 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 charge is finished it will also tell you here on screen that the charge is finished so once it's finished that you can disconnect the battery that's all you need to do give give your battery a fill when it's telling you it's charged make sure it's warm the battery should get quite warm when it's um, near the end of the charge on a 9mh battery so that's what you'd um, that's what you'd be looking for there so I'm gonna stop this charge now because we're not going to wait for this to to fully charge um, so I'm going to press and hold the start stop button because it hasn't actually finished so then then we can disconnect that battery so another little thing that I would say is what I do um, I'm not telling anyone how to or what to do but what I do and I don't have any problems with um, my batteries they last a long time um, they stay good I've never had a battery fail on me but with a 9mh, a lot of people leave these either connected to the car or connected to the charger the last time they charged it. Uh, or they leave them flat after the last time they've used it. So what happens then is after a few months of storage, say through the winter, they go back to the charger, plug them in and they don't get any reading. It, nothing happens at all It's because the battery is drained to zero volts so it has no power so when you plug it in um, this charge is pretty good actually because there is a way that you can um, recover the battery if it's not too far gone so even though there may not be any voltage you can set this up manually to to start putting voltage into these batteries so that again, another good reason why this charger is a really good one to get um, if you're into your Traxxas products and you've got Traxxas cars if you get the Traxxas batteries and the Traxxas chargers, it's going to make it really easy for you um, to look after your stuff and keep everything running nicely. So, but what I was say, where I was going with that was, with a 9mh, if you charge the battery fully, not too long before you want to use the car, you're going to get the most power out of it and obviously longest runtime. 
once you've finished with the car, if you have drained the battery to the point the car's not going anymore, just disconnect the battery from the car and then give it another charge before you pack it away. So if you do that, you're going to have a fully charged battery, even half charge it. You can kind of see on here how much charge you've got in the battery. Just put some voltage back into this battery before you pack it away. That way, this battery will last a long, long time in storage. The next time you want to use the car, obviously go back to the charger, give it a full charge um, and then use the car again. But just don't pack these batteries away after they've just been used in the car and, and drained to almost flat because the next time you want to charge it, you're probably going to have issues. So that's just a little tip there to try and keep your batteries in good shape for the next time you want to use them and, and not hit having to keep coming and buying new batteries every time. So that's your 9mh battery, it's pretty straightforward. Um, can't really go too wrong with these if you follow that um, procedure. Let's now jump on to a 2S LiPo. So with a LiPo battery, you do need to take a little bit more care. Um, you need to keep the cells balanced in these batteries for them to stay good. You don't want any one of these cells, whether it's a 2S, 3S, 4S, none of the cells you want um, to drop below three volts. That's the point of um, you know where things start to become an issue. So always keep these balanced. Um, and I'm gonna show you what to do. It's literally as simple as the 9H, it's just a few extra steps that you need to know about to make sure you're looking after these batteries properly. So let's go back to the charger. So again, your battery's ready just to connect. and your charger's automatically picked it as a LiPo and a balanced charge. So every time you plug a LiPo battery in, the first thing it's gonna do is pick a LiPo balance charge. So the balance charge is going to fully balance both cells up to its full voltage. So what, let's just flick back to the app. So again, this app really does tell you everything. So now you've got your battery type here um, and all the information about the battery the LiPo charge option that is picked um, and all the information there. Uh, on this screen, the voltage reading. So you've got cell one and cell two because it's the 2S battery. So both cells are reading 3.8 volts, which is what they will be at storage level. So that's what the storage charge takes you back to, 3.8 volts per cell. So you know they're both balanced. So treat this as a new battery. They come in their storage level um, when they're new, so they'll be 3.8, 3.8. So all you do here to fully charge a battery, again, is click and hold the start stop button and the charge process will start. So you'll get your flashing green light to indicate that you're charging and then back to the app. Straight away here, you've got the voltage slightly increasing to 3.9, 3.9. So that's each cell. So on this balance charge, what it's going to do is it's going to charge each cell of the battery one side at a time. So it'll do cell one will go up to 4.0, cell two will go up to 4.0, then it'll go back to cell one, that'll go to 4.1, cell two then will drop up to 4.1. So it will it will charge each cell um, up until the point that they both reach 4.2. So 4.2 volts in each cell will be the full the full charge of the battery. So again, what will happen here is you'll get your readings um, and it's saying there's an estimation time of around about 27 minutes to fully charge this battery from the storage level. So from the storage level, it's pretty much half full already. So you're, you're only topping it up to its full charge. Once that happens, you're going to get your solid green light again. The charger will beep a few times. It will tell you at the app that your charge is finished. At that point, once once all the beeping stops, then you can just disconnect the battery from the front of the charger and you're, and you're ready to go. I'm not gonna charge this battery fully because I don't wanna keep you for 26 minutes waiting for this um, to finish. So I'm gonna hit the start stop button to stop the charge and just disconnect the battery. So now you've got a, you've either got a fully charged battery because you've charged it and haven't used it, or you've charged it and you've used it in the car, 
and you've disconnected it from the car, which is really important for a LiPo battery. Again, there's tickets on every battery um, telling you to not leave it connected to the car. Don't charge it with a 9mh charger, obviously. This is the LiPo charge that's charger that you're going to need to charge a battery like this. But yeah, there's warning tickets here, so give them a read and take notice of what they're trying to say. So let's get back to the next stage of how to look after your life of actually after you've used it or charged it, but aren't gonna use it and wanna pack it away again. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go back to the charger. You can connect the battery again. And as we said before, it will always automatically pick a balance charge on a LiPo battery type. Let's go back to the charger here so you can see this um, a little bit more clearly. So what you've got here is a button um, which says LiPo charge underneath of it and the light is currently on balance. So with this, you can toggle between fast, store and balance. So balance is its automatic one that it picks every time you plug a battery in, it's gonna automatically choose that. So if you start that, you're gonna balance charge a battery to full. What you need to do is when you wanna pack the battery away is click that button and, but skip through past. You don't want the one on, uh, sorry, fast. You don't want to fast charge these um, LiPo batteries. The fast charge just gives you voltage into the battery. It doesn't balance each cell. So when you're charging a LiPo, you must keep them cells balanced. Um, I always suggest just never use the fast charge because that way you, you don't accidentally use it and you keep check on the balance of the battery constantly and it, it, it's going to make your batteries last a lot longer so I suggest just don't use the fast charge that keeps it simple for everybody so you go back to your charger you've plugged in you don't want to balance charge it to full you want to storage charge it so you're going to click this until your lights on store then you're going to hold the button again to start the charge process and what that's now going to do is perform a storage charge so it's flashing it's, it's, it's pretty much at storage level already, so it's already pretty much there. Um, green lights flashing to indicate that it's doing its charge process um, and it's doing a storage charge at this point. So let's go back to the screen so you can see what it's doing. Um, and it, again, it tells you here it's performing a storage charge. Cell one is on 3.9, uh, cell two is on 3.9, it's 21% there. That's gonna be, I don't know how long it'll take, it'll take as long as it takes, but um, effectively that's gonna drop these voltages in that battery wherever they are. So if it's on three volts, it's gonna raise up to 3.8. If it's above 3.8, say it's on 4.0, um, you've only used it for a short time and there's still more voltage in the battery than the storage level, it will drop it back down to 3.8 volts per cell. But it's also doing that balancing so it's balancing both those cells back to 3.8 which is the the important process here the important process of the nine uh, the lipo batteries is the fact that you're keeping them cells balanced so you always want those cells to be equal to each other so if if one's 3.9 you want the other one to be 3.9 um, so that's the important um, part of looking after a lipo basically basically um, so yeah, LiPo battery basically, sorry. So what you're gonna do now is wait for that to balance out. When the, the light goes solid green, it's gonna beep a few times. Once that stops, and it tells you here that the, that the charge is finished, you can then just disconnect the battery. Again, I'm gonna hit the start stop button and actually disconnect the battery because we're not gonna keep you waiting for that process. So that's how you, um, that's the basic process of keeping a LiPo battery well balanced um, and just in good shape really. So you can also, you don't necessarily have to go to this charger to charge the battery. So say for example, you've got a, uh, a battery that's been in storage for a couple of months you can just use this to check your voltage. So obviously you'll need your app running um, and you'll go to the charger. So let's just plug this 4S battery in, connect your battery. It's gonna automatically again pick a LiPo balance charge, but we're not gonna charge it. We just literally wanna to come to this screen and check the voltage here of what the battery is saying. So this battery may have been in storage for two, three months. 
you just now and then go back to the charger here and just go to your cell readings 3.8 3.8 3.8 3.8 3 so that is still currently at a perfect storage level and like i say these batteries when they're new they've been stored for a while and and they will stay there if they're good uh, with that you just disconnect the battery after you've got your voltage reading if you're happy with it then you don't need to do a, another storage charge to rebalance those cells or, or a charge to use it so that's the process of um, charging a lipo battery um, it's really straightforward and if you do follow that process i can promise that you will have the fewest problems um, with these batteries another Another good thing to get used to doing, just to keep the batteries as good as possible, is get used to putting a certain battery in a car the same way every time, so you're not bending bending the leads backwards and forwards all the time, because these lead, the little thin leads here are the balance leads that are built into the connector. The balance leads locate on the pins inside the connector when you plug it into the charger, if those balance leads become broken, then you will get errors and things on the charger. It, it won't recognize how many cells are in the battery. It won't be able to balance the battery because the, the balance lead that, that does that is gonna not be, you know, it's just gonna be broken. So there's not gonna be a connection there. So really important to try and look after the physical element of the battery as well. You know, if you start swinging these around by the cables or yanking them too hard then you're going to probably hit issues there so if you're sensible with these batteries again they will last a long time um, so the important thing is look after the the physical element of the battery cable um, and also keep your balance charge and your storage charge regularly happening in that order and then um, hopefully you will have a great time with the Traxxas uh, ID batteries they do give a really good power output um, you know I'm not going to go into details there but if you are using the Traxxas battery with a high current Traxxas ID connector on it the delivery of power from the battery to the car to the ESC is going to be what it needs to be it's what Traxxas is, has intended it to be and you're going to get the best out of the, the car running the correct battery that Traxxas recommend for for that particular car so hope that helps everybody um, understand the process of the charging and it is really simple uh, you know it's so simple once you know what to do um, and it's it's not scary at all another really good thing and, and quite important thing is to read the manual they do come with a little booklet in the box which is really good it's very in-depth so if there is a question you need to answer if there is an error code popping up on this on the screen like one of these light red lights is lit there's a little grid in there that tells you what what the error code is the other thing is also while you're charging um, from a safety point of view just make sure you you're present while the charge is happening don't shoot off down to the local shop to pick up some bread don't shoot out to the garden to do a bit of sunbathing. Just stay present while you're doing these charge processes, just in case the worst does start to happen, which touch wood, it won't. Um, it, it shouldn't. You know, the only time things happen is when it, it's normally down to human error, where someone's trying to charge something but in the wrong way. You know, like you can set this charger up manually as well. So if you was to set up, um, a manual charge running trying to charge a lipo on 9mh settings you're gonna have issues because that's not what it's meant to do you, that's why these chargers are intelligent and they do that thinking for you so you know really good safe charge to use to charge batteries and get the most out of the car but just stay present when you're doing these charging um, of batteries it's just it's really important so once again, that's, I think, covered everything. If this video has helped you, please do like um, this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Um, there's also a new feature on YouTube, which is a thanks button, which is actually, they call it a, a super thanks, which it's there for any customers to, to basically say thank you with a, a 
maybe a, a donation of sorts um, there's a little slider button under there that will that will give you the option of, of what to choose so if anyone does do that and um, shows any support for for the channel that'd be really greatly appreciated don't don't go um, putting in too much just just the, the smallest the smallest number that you can put on there will be will be awesome and it helps us to continue to um, to make these videos I know some of the videos are quite um, informative not too exciting but I believe for the majority of customers that want to learn certain things these videos are going to be very useful um, so it helps you understand the products a little bit more um, and get the most out of them we will be getting on to some more interesting videos taking some cars out um, and getting some action videos with some some different cars soon so hopefully um, you'll be coming back to to keep an eye on the channel and watch some of those videos too but that's it for now um, thanks again for watching have a great day and um, I'll catch you in the next video.